tonight, we welcome Dr. Fermante Suwanda. Um, just like me, he's, he, English is his second language, so I ask for your patience with both of us. Um, but we do feel, in spite of the language barrier, that we would like to learn from him and that you would also, we would also like to give you this, the sense of, of meeting this person and who he is. Um, joining him is Dr. Francois Deacon from uh, the University of the Free State. Um, also in the conversation, he will also be part of the Q&A. They are colleagues, they work together often. Um, so without any further ado, I will stop sharing on my side and Francho will um, welcome him, Dr. Fermante, to the screen. And um, then Dr. Fermante, the screen is yours. You're welcome to, to start your presentation when Francho welcomes you. Thank you, Johan. Hello, colleagues and everyone. It's uh, nice to see some of the old faces, especially to see Ufat and Mr. Royst. It's good to see you again. Um, I mean, it's already three years since we've been to Indonesia and spending time together, having all those meetings and discussions and sharing what we're doing in South Africa. And um, I think you spent three weeks in South Africa, Fermanto, if I remember correctly. Yes. It was you and, and Rudy Putra. And then... Uh, um, Apui, who passed yeah. away last year, yeah. Yes. So yes. It, it's sad it's that we've uh, lost a colleague and a big conservationist for fighting uh, the, the, the plight for the rhinos. But if I, I mean, the privilege is mine to introduce Mr. Uh, Fermanto. And over the years, we've become good friends. Um, the time you spend in South Africa, but also the time we went to Indonesia, that we could uh, share... Um, just, uh, just uh, the, your livelihood and everything that you and how you do that. And it's, it's really something that I would encourage anyone. Um, we, we have so many talks about our rhinos in Africa and, and the issues we face with white rhinos and black rhinos and, and conservation and, and legalizing uh, the, the trade and all that. But if you don't, if you don't see the other side and the, the, the rest of the other species and, and what they deal with, uh, we will make very little progress in South Africa if we don't include the, the, the larger uh, rhino conservation community. So if I can briefly say a few things about uh, our guest speaker, uh, Dr. Fermando, at the moment is, is already a senior officer at, and he stays there at, at Pandelang uh, City, which is close to Ujongkulo National Park. And, and like, he, like uh, you will hear from him soon, it's the only place where you can see and still find Java rhinos. And uh, we were fortunate, um, one of my colleagues, a good friend, uh, a lot of you would know him, uh, v Dr. Willem Dafu, who's the veterinarian, um, Hasty de Beer, we went to Indonesia, and we went to go search with the rangers and Fermanto and his colleagues. Uh, after all the meetings we had, we could go and search for those rhinos, and it, it took a lot of patience, <laughs> and it was, was not easy traveling, I, I remember yeah. the canoeing and the... Yeah, no the water and everything it's it's difficult but what i can say is they they dream big and they, they they've got the same dreams that we have in south africa i mean uh, fermanto has been dreaming for over 15 plus years building a world-class sanctuary and he's part of big conservation efforts and he takes hands with the local ngos with ufat and the other uh, ngos that want to assist them which is a good thing and we can learn from them uh, how they involve the community so uh, Fermanto, I mean, he's not just working. He's he's got a two boys and he's recently got a girl, and yeah. like he describes, <laughs> it, he's, he's got one wife. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's nice that he's also a family man. He's uh, he's very very dedicated for his work, but uh, apart from his community development and uh, trying to save the Java rhino, um, yeah. it it's a big thing to try and promote. Um, for the, the, the uh, conservation efforts they, they do on that side, and we can learn from them. So it's my privilege uh, to introduce Fermanto to you. He's, yeah. uh, he's working and staying within a, in a World Heritage Site. The, the Ujong Kulo National Park is, is, is a World Heritage Site. And they do have other threats, which uh, Fermanto will refer to. For instance, yeah. uh, we had the privilege to go to Krakatoa. And uh, if you look at the history of that uh, the vol volcano there, it's, it's a real threat for not just the, the natural habitat, but for the animals and the livelihood for the people living on the islands there. But I, if, if you can succeed in building that center of excellence that you've dreamed about, Fermanto, and 
and uh, putting up a sanctuary and, uh, and, and get the right people to assist you. We will be driving with you on that. And uh, I mean, you gave us just the, the pleasure of telling us there was a newly born Java rhino. And if you take all the rhinos in, in that uh, entire uh, population that you find there, it's, it's a very, very rare uh, occasion. So uh, there's probably five or six uh, of the adult females that are still fertile and that can breed. And if there's one more baby, we can celebrate that with you. So in general, the, the park, Fermante will tell you something about Ujong Kulon, but uh, it, it's amazing to, to see that there's over 700 plant species and 35 mammal species, five primates, but still they have to try and protect uh, the birds and the habitat and uh, the, the last remaining Java rhinos that you won't be seeing anywhere else in the world other than going to visit uh, Fermanto and Mr. Royce. And hopefully when I go and see Mr. Fermanto again, he would be uh, promoted to be the... the uh, one of the senior uh, um, people making big decisions. But at the moment, Mr. Amgodo also had a, a little setback in his health. Uh, we wish him all the best. Uh, but uh, conservation is a 24-7 job. And uh, yeah, Fermanto, the floor is yours. And welcome to the platform. And I hope the public and everyone can engage uh, with you and enjoy the evening. Thank you, Fermanto. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Rajastikan. Uh, thank you juga. Thank, thank you to Johan. <coughs> uh, introduce my my name is Firman Tanofiar Suanda. I am from Indonesia. I'm rock from Uji Kulon National Park. And now, uh, now uh, for the presentation uh, about the uh, Uji Kulon National Park. This is uh, you can see our Japan Rhino. The journey, the course of honoring of 16 years of uh, conservation in Indonesia, in Ujikulon. This is a logo for our Ministry of Environment, uh, Forestry, and then and, and this logo in for our national park. Uh, before that, everyone to know uh, I am from Indonesia. Uh, so far, you can see the world map. In this area, Indonesia, Ujukulon, in here, this is between uh, Java Island and Sumatra Island. You can see the Ujungkulon National, National Park in here, Somalia in here, and Tanzania in here, and South Sudan in here. It's near from uh, you know uh, from Asia. This is South Asia. We in in Ujungkulon. You can see in detail in here. This is the end of the Java Island in Ujukulo National Park. We have uh, 105,000 uh, hectare in our area. This is included the the, uh, the land and also the sea in here. In uh, this uh, from Jakarta is only 200 kilometer. You can see, uh, from Jakarta in the capital city of Indonesia is near from to the, the distance is 200 kilometer. Uh, this is a uh, uh, first time I go to South Africa with uh, two of my friends, Mr. Samsudin and Mr. Rudy. Uh, I go to presentation at Free State University. I invite from uh, to from uh, Frances Deacon and also William uh, uh, in our uh, presentation the, the the theme is global rhino conservation research in uh, 2019 19. we see in lot of talk about the monitoring and also about the protection the, the javan rhino uh, we had a lot of fun in this you can see the the five picture uh, six picture in the in the rhino but they don't have the Javan rhino picture in here. Just only a, a footprints. They are uh, called, uh, William call it is uh, about the uh, the shadow of the rhino. And then we there uh, William Defu and Heste go to Indonesia. They are see uh, the four C the Java rhino in the chicken turf. Uh, and then uh, the, the Willem 
had the picture uh, from the other place is very good picture and see that the rhino is our rhino can swim we also visiting some private farm uh, we i see the first time the little cub the rhino cub in this area in the farm private uh, uh, farm uh, i think this is very exciting because i the first time in i see the rhino and also we are discussed with uh, Daniel Pinar in uh, Kruger National Park. We are camped there. And then I also learn about the how to use the, you know, to, to abuse the, the, use the gun for the, for the rhino. And then uh, how many to doses. And then treat uh, the treat for the rhino and then uh, we said Deacon, uh, the last time she uh, told me about the FLIR camera. In this, this is good area because this is good idea because in our density and our forest, we can see this uh, in the middle of the night and we can see of the middle of the noon, you can see this, the, the, where the rhino is. It's hidden with this FLIR camera. Uh, I interesting about at the last time I go there is that game farm rhino leaning, uh, and I bought uh, something about interesting about the the RFID chip and I learned about that because if after you cut the the horn and then you put the chip in this with this area with this with this tool, uh, maybe I I impl apa, implemented to our forest to but not for the rhino but for for, for our tree uh, or a specific is honey tree and the and then learn about how to cut and everything how to measure and how this is uh, i also we meet the, the, the clive falker uh, i see the their museum what i found in this mission in the clive falker museum is uh you know the the teeth is different. It is not our Japan rhino uh, skull, but this is not the, because the teeth is different. And then I asked to, to, to the Clive, this is what where you had have, have the, the skull of the rhino from the American. But uh, this is the wrong uh, Japan rhino skull. And this very interesting about the RFID. You put the RFID chip in this uh, uh, horn, you put this, and but in my, my country, I I learned about I learned a, a lot about the uh, in South Africa. Some you put the RFID from the Minister of Agriculture in your country, South Africa, and then I put this like this. If you put the, the for the cattle, we also cooperation with the. Uh, smart solution Nusantara and also Centras. There are uh, NGO also from Indonesia and uh, Centras is the local the NGO from the university. Uh, I put this. I learned about the RFID, but I implemented it to social environment for the accuracy, traceability, and uh, metric authorization. And this uh, we can learn about the tracing about the RFID, I, I make the system and everything for the RFID. I hope in the future in this, uh, uh, not only for honey tree, but we can put in the our rhino also. But uh, I don't know, we have much learn about to capture about the Javan rhino, uh, some uh, run about so many method. We are uh, pit, pit trap or uh, you can uh, 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 shoot by the medicine. And then we, I put uh, the, the chip about the RFID. I research in Puchang Island for the, the for try. Uh, we have a unique code and positioning point, and then we have a tracking in this area. 
we are learn about little thing i hope uh, for the bigger the bigger thing we are, i have somebody said for development uh, the gps uh, tracing and this uh, we put the you can see the table from the code of the tree and code of the fid a nectar a kind of tree a coordinate and so many how many uh, nests in honey in that tree you can see in here i put it in here okay that uh, i learned about the java a lot and also uh, i meet with mr uh, rudy i omit mr uh, uh, francis Deacon and also william este and everything i go to, to the who made the gps collar in there uh, mr uh, Deacon said this is good for the our conservation because i i have to know we have to know the area the home range the for the javan rhino is I need that. We need that, but but how to capture it? We just uh, uh, need to run about to, to capture to into for the Japan radio because they are in the wild. Okay. As you see in here, this is a, a different uh, from your rhino. We have a male rhino as small horn, which is in twenty five centimeter or. Se until uh, 27 centimeter in the length uh, but the female rhino is our rhino is doesn't have a horn and also you can see the prehensile lip uh, you know uh, uh, lips in here is to catch the young leaf in here and uh, the length is the for our rhino and maybe a two and a four meter and hide between uh, maybe uh, one meter seven. And then the weight is between uh, 160, I mean, 160, yeah, yeah, and 220 kilograms. This is a uh, critical, in, critical in danger in for the uh, Java Rhino. It's uh, before, now I see the you know the so too many uh, adults male in Java rhino, but I see the progress from our new data. Now the male is the thirty nine, and and the, the female is thirty eight. This is good sign. And also you see, uh, in two thousand ten. Uh, the Katyn National Park from Vietnam is uh, the their Vietnam rhino is uh, you know have no more rhino because they have uh, came to Ujung Kulon to uh, to talk about uh, to to, uh, to us and then uh, because because they have uh, threats about from uh, mine mine explode then then uh, learn to us and then but only only one they are only one have one female rhino and then uh, died and they are extinct now and you can see this is a land called ujung Kulon national park land cover uh, this is uh, uh, all maps in uh, 2015 and this is a uh, panaitan island and this is uh, we call it sepenanju ujung Kulon. And this is a uh, territory of Gunung Honce. This is uh, the area a lot of uh, the Javan rhino. And this is area a lot of the honey tree. This is area a uh, lot of the Javan gibbon. And can you see the the you know lowland forest in Ujung Kulon in this map? Uh, okay. This is the last frontier in Ujung Kulon. Uh, for the Javan rhino habitat. If you see the threats about the uh, uh, from the from, uh, at Ujung Kulon National Park, uh, first time about uh, the poaching, and then I will talk about the invasive uh, species, and then natural disaster, and this is this is outbreak and small population. 
and you can see in here competition with the Javan bull and predator is low and then uh, you can see in the climate change habitat alteration is drug is medium infrastructure or tourism also medium the threats is natural disaster from the from the tsunami or Krakow or Krakatau is medium also in breeding dispersion unknown because we have need a lab for the analysis about the DNA and everything. And the poaching is high, maybe. And the wildlife hunting is high also. The invasive native species arranging up palm of bamboo is also high. Why the poaching is high? Because we only uh, always uh, take the video trap from our forest and from Rosmananjung every month. And then we see uh, some local people to inside to the uh, Javan Reno habitat, but they are search for birds or honey or everything, but not for the rhino. A settlement ex expansion and forest enrichment land farming is low. Uh, disease or from wildlife and livestock is medium. Livestock grazing low and then FT utilization high tourism within the work medium. This is uh, about the poaching. This is the uh, trace uh, the line of their uh, to inside Ujung Kulon National Park. We can see by the GPS and everything. This is their trace. This is the area area they are inside. Uh, they came from the Ujung Kulon uh, local people in here. And also you can see from here, uh, this is the predicted tsunami effect Ujung Kulon National Park. This is Ujung Kulon. You can see in here, the last time uh, uh, they are blow at the December 2019. Uh, to, at 22 December yeah, 2019, the Krakatoa is explode, uh, but not very big. They are just only few uh, disaster in here our area, but not for the not very big for the our rhino. If it's getting bigger, yeah, the, the mountain is, is uh, after explode like, and now and get, getting bigger and bigger and bigger again. But this is can predict about if a tsunami very blow, you can see in here area it will for the habitat. The in the red one is the habitat for the Javan rhino. Is this will gone maybe uh, a little bit extinct in this area because the Javan rhino live in the low forest, not the high forest. Okay, you can see in here the wave between. If they are 40 meter in the red one, and then the, the higher than 40 meter in the green one. Uh, we also analyze about this one, the arena uh, obsidian futula. This is because this is not the uh, the alien species. This is endemic uh, plant in from the Ujung Kulon, but. You can see in this picture, if you to to many arena, the the Javan rhino cannot eat proper in here because they are the Javan rhino eat the young leaf in here. We we must do something about it. And you can see uh, from the the defect from the DNA in breeding, you can see some uh, local. You know, in the in in, the, in this animal, you can see the defect the, the, in, in the ears and this body and everything. Okay. Uh, how many is the uh, the question is in Ujung Kulon? How many rhino can carrying capacity in Ujung Kulon? We can see in the here about the carrying capacity. How many? Now we have 70 and 77 for the Javan Rhino. 
uh, and also we have some this disaster you can see in here this is the last time we in this map uh, where the, the place of the javan reno is died we find found the their skull their their body they are dead near in this area in the 2010 and 2004 2012 and everything you can see in here but a lot of javan rhino died in uh, south uh, we call it south area in this because in krakatoa in here and the uh, the north area in here uh, we can see in here Uh, this is the last time our, our picture uh, has been died in the 1982. From now, you can see we have uh, some uh, a veterinarian to necropsy the body and then uh, the analyze about the, you know, the poisoning uh, the rhino in this area in this for this rhino and then his skull has been uh, shot by gun in it it didn't fight it we didn't only snack use uh, this is the only one day uh, corpse of the javan rhino we can uh, uh, analyze it and to, to the lab uh, to necropsy can see in this in this all, all time <clears throat> and then what we have done for from 16 16 years for Japan Rhino conservation program in Ujung Kulon we have uh, in 1982 1962 we have uh, uh, 20, 25 individual and 2020 uh, we have 77 individual population. Uh, you can see in the data in this only the data is only increase and increase. Sometimes it just drop and then increase again. This is uh, dynamical from the our uh, population because some may, may use some different method. And the last time we in 2000 in here under 70. We use a trace of footprints, maybe some uh, 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 the footprints and uh, see the the officer in the forest. But in after this two thousand ten until now, we use a video trap or camera trap. Use method album to use to identify the Javan rhino, and then we can see more detail and more proof about the Javan Rhino until now, 70-70. Okay. Uh, this is the land transect map area uh, we have before time. We cooperated with the WWF also. Uh, we put the camera trap in this area and then we train local people to join with the Ujungkulon National Park. This is very interesting because the local people also participate with the management Ujungkulon National Park. They are work for us. They are join with us. They are uh, their time they are do and job with us there are no other activity for the poaching or uh, fishing illegally or anything they are work for us and then um, what the question is how until how many years how many people can absorb the ujung kolon national park absorb the local people to work in ujung kolon there and then uh, we have some alternative for the local people to join with us 
in the community development for the prosperity of the local and uh, to achieve about the uh, uh, the uh, what you call it uh, the for the honey and everything for the local people they are work like Mr. Ovat they are work for the Ujungkola National Park also and this is our population structure you can see adults and everything in here measure this is uh, the growth of the habitat and maintained to support population growth in study from 2007 until 2013 and then for the study for the langkap and then 2017 until 2020 to langkap control we only have uh, 100 hectare where the target is 200 uh, 500 205 uh, 200 hectare it, and this uh, we call uh, to uh, treat about the arena and you can see the use the old days we use machete you guys machete to or also an x to cut the tree that very effective for the our work we use a um, uh, chainsaw for the much faster from the the work to open area about the arena and everything and also we use uh, local people not from uh, local people work from that our do and our project in ujung Golan. there are so many activity in our forest but that they are uh, so uh, they are joined with us this is after the cut the langkap and then en enrichment for after arena control we some uh, tree to enrich for food for the javan rhino in this area and then uh, there we are plan some plan in this arena area there for the food for the Japan rhino and then uh, I hope we hope the more increase for the population Japan rhino we also run about the NS study but this is new for us 2003 identified the study uh, we are from Do, you know poo from our dino poop this is our sample is very bad you know you, if in in your area in South Africa you use blood is more good sample. We are from the poop. This is not very not very fresh, uh, fresh sample. The progress result about that you can see in here uh, after we send the cooperation with the University of Institute Pertanian Bogor. Uh, from the 20 percent of the total population all come from the one maternal line same type of the haplotype, haplotype type 3 for the java rhino and they also this is outbreak from zoonosis we talk about to, to the local people we use local ngo also to talk about to there because uh, uh, we need to uh, talk about the how their their cattle do not go to the our area the Javan Rhino area or, or national Ujubulok Pulon uh, area. And then we talk about the second habitat for Javan Rhino if the tsunami is uh, or Krakatoa blow. We have some alternate uh, location. This is Suaka Marga, Satwa, or Suata, Suaka Marga Cikepu and Suaka Marga Cikesik. We have two alternatives. uh okay this is uh coming together and beginning staying together is progress and hard working together is success by henry ford thank you offer all of you the opportunity to to ask questions i saw um that there were already questions coming in from peter moles um in the chat if uh, peter would you like to unmute and ask uh, and ask your questions live um, and then also francois if you would like to chip in with the answers you're most welcome anytime marit um, we can keep you permanently unmuted so you can um 
uh, join the answers anytime that you would like to. Hi there. Um, well, my last question, I, I can't remember what I said in the beginning, but um, to, what, to what extent do you get um, international support from, from NGOs financially? And um, <clears throat> I have found my other question. The other, you, you mentioned wildlife hunting. What do you mean by that as opposed to poaching? Yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Peter Mills. Uh, I answer about the NGO, what support uh, get from the international support, the NGOs. We are from the international, we have, uh, you know, about the International Rhino Foundation, ARF, we call it in Ujungkulon, and then ARF, uh, cooperation with YABI, Yayasan Badak Indonesia, and this our uh, international uh, cooperation with the, local, the international NGO. And also we uh, work with the other uh, international, maybe in, before uh, it with WWF, and then so we call it with but now, but the minister is topic cooperation with WWF now. Uh, about the wildlife uh, poaching or hunting, we this local people, you know, in our uh, local people from Ujung Kulon near the buffer zone village, we also, we lot of things set awareness, you know, at to school, to kindergarten, uh, middle school, and high school. They are, we are, uh, every six months, we go, the, we, we visiting to their school, to local people. We awareness and then we uh, about the Java Reno is very good. It must be protected because we, if you say to the older men uh, about the poaching and wildlife, they are cannot uh, understand or wow, uh, they are cannot say no. They are not uh, accept about your opinion or, or, or awareness because if you in this uh, age of the school, they are why. They are much much uh, easier to you if you want to uh, uh, put some knowledge or some uh, uh, no, uh, information to about the uh, Java Rhino. It must be protected. If you talk to the much older, it's not cannot you. They are not refused about the information. <clears throat> and then, and then uh, we use local people about the wildlife hunting. Uh, Local people is much uh, proud about the Javan Rhino. You must uh, make, uh, you know, uh, about the Javan Rhino pride campaign. About uh, you use, we use that. For the iconic for the Javan Rhino is must be first. Uh, we also have uh, the uh, the Javan Gibbon also, but the Javan Rhino is the must uh, the very endangered species. It's only one in the, in the Java or, or in Asia in the world. Only Javan Rhino is only in Ujung Kulon National Park. It's very important. And then we say that to the local people, and then the local government also use the you know the 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 sign for the their of their office. The government use the Javan Rhino also. We must uh, some pride campaign for the Javan Rhino, and also you must do that. And then the wildlife can't poaching about that. They are hunting about the lots of birds, you know. You know the culture about the, our our culture in Java, Java people. They are need birds for the for the life, you know, birds, house, and everything. But the the, the birds is is for the sale because uh, Jakarta in uh, Ujung Kulon near Jakarta and a lot of people are from Jakarta on near uh, need birds uh, uh, the high price because. They, ha they have no alternative life or they are no native job for their they are living uh, sometimes they have no no land uh, sometimes they have no no boat in that people sometimes we need we, you, you you must uh, join join to to Sungkulon and then you employ them to to us because they are work for not for the rich for for, for by bike or now they are for eat you know, 
therefore it that the wildlife hunting on our ujung kulon is to first is about uh, the birds because i first time brought from ujung kulon lots of bird i, I the first time to go to forest in ujung kulon uh, lots of birds in ujung kulon but now the birds a little gun you know because this, this this sound is little not very not very much in in the 10 years ago in this uh, about the poaching but the poaching about the rhino is not very often because uh, maybe the, the 20 years ago maybe the poaching about the uh, about the rhino is a lot yeah maybe in this time not very we see from the our video trap we can prove it from the, our video traps or camera trap sometimes we have some intelligence for the javan rhino watching okay thank you thank you dr uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I just want to comment. Sure, I go ahead, please, Peter. I think there's, there's, there's this is you, you mentioned that you know people have uh, have no additional income and it's, and it's part of their life, and I think in the developing world that's that's a common thing. So when we when we look at conservation solutions, we have to look outside of the a normal Western narrative of of what conservation is and wh and where we want to go. <clears throat> Not there, there's no easy answer, but um, I I think we must really take in cognizance into um, different cultures and 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 the way they see their natural environment and how they can benefit from it. We sit with the same issue here in Africa. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Um, definitely common themes, common issues, common challenges. Um, Dr. Francho Deacon, are you available? I would just like to, you know, you've seen the, the issues surrounding rhino conservation in South Africa. You, you, you know the um, situation surrounding poaching in South Africa. How does it compare to what you've seen in Indonesia? Johan, I think uh, what Fermanto said there um, uh, right at the end is, is for 20 years they, they haven't had any poaching. And um, if, if you think what the, the issues we're facing in, in Africa and um, the, the larger picture of, of these huge numbers we used to have and in the thousands, and they've maintained a very small population but gradually increased in numbers, and what they succeeded in is getting the community to, to be proud of it, the government taking part of it, uh, taking uh, partnerships with the NGOs, um, with uh, collaborative efforts to try and, and uh, gradually try and understand. I mean, they're not hands-on with management. They don't move and translocate rhinos or any wildlife like we do in Africa on a daily basis. Uh, they see them, they observe them with camera traps, they can identify them, uh, they've got limited access to, to, to quality sort of DNA and data, uh, database and, uh, and, and, and research techniques, but, but what we can learn from them from the South African side is, is how they engage with the public. I mean, it's, it's, it's one national park that continuously, like Fermanto say, they, they go every six months, they go back to the same schools and they, they educate the, the children and, the, and the, the people and the government. And no one would dare to kill a, a Java rhino because uh, they, they're proud of it. And, and to some extent, and what Fermanto referred to, the birds and the hunting and the poaching for them, that it's the, there's not a difference really between hunting and poaching, it's poaching for them is to some extent they can they've got they use the birds as a buffer zone to 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 feed the the, the community because there's a big trade with birds and, and local indigenous birds in in indonesia but to some extent the, the park would allow that as long as they keep their hands off the the primates and the, the larger mammals and definitely the yava rhinos so the buffer zone they're also protecting but to some extent they, they allow us uh, something like that, but with the with the the local NGOs taking part and and education, 
that's something we can learn in Africa. And uh, I, I, I really must applaud them because they've got really, really limited resources when it, when it comes to science and uh, a management perspective on, on being hands on putting up a sanctuary just to convince the government on, on trying to engage with uh, decision making. Are they allowed to put up a, a sanctuary? Are they allowed to, to move some of the animals and put them in, in uh, breeding programs to try and, and see what the genetic status is? It's a constant fight with, with uh, political decisions more than it is the willingness of, of uh, Fermanta and his team and Ufat and Rio, uh, Rios to, to try and make the difference. The, the willingness is the, it's the, just on the decision um, making level that makes it difficult for them to, to take the, the next steps. Thank you very much. Very insightful. Marty, please go ahead and ask your question. Thanks, uh, Fermanto, for a very interesting um, talk. Uh, <clears throat> I've just uh, got a couple of questions, if I can. Yes. Um, the number of um, speed or number of individual um, rhinos that are left in terms of Javan rhinos and even in, in, in uh, the Sumatran rhinos, I presume you'd call them their, their cousins uh, on, the, on the other island. Um, do they actually have enough numbers to be a viable breeding um, going forward? Or is there going to be an in, inbreeding problem um, with, with so few uh, yes. specimens? That's the word I'm looking for that remain. Um, so that's the first question, and I'll let you answer, and then I'll ask the next one if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. About the Javarano, we have some happen, and in my presentation, uh, some defect, you know, in the their body, about the ears and uh, you know scar and everything. They are, we have uh, in in breeding, in breeding, it's happened in New, in Javan Rhino, yeah, because we we just uh, look from some some sample we not let uh, 77 uh, the rhino we 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 we, we, uh, we gather in the sample is but we if gather the this the, the javan rhino happen is uh, the same uh, 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 maybe same dead or grand grand the the, the grand, uh, grandma or grand grandfather from the, the rhino we have happen in javan rhino is in breeding i said yes in breeding is happen in Japan right now, and uh, will, 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 it, will, it, will it mean that there's a viable population, or eventually that, that's going to be a problem that's going to end the, the population? Or no, the, the, the population is maybe not uh, we not uh, not very dangerous, but the defect and everything uh, to the to the population is mass. Uh, if you say in, in dangerous, no. But the, the the numbers now I see from 2009-10 from 2002 now is increased by number. A lot of mm -hmm. cubs in born in in, in uh, 2020 until 2020-22. The born is 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 is, is increased, but the the death also maybe. Uh, we know we sometimes we can, cannot know, yeah, because in the wild, yeah, and but we see it in the in the video trap, some is some is gone, mostly there and died also, yeah. Okay, thanks. And then the other one, um, in terms of Sumatran rhino, I think their numbers are less than the Javan rhino, but which species is more at risk between the two, and which one do you think has got a better chance to not go extinct, and is that because of you know the habitat that still remains so that there's yeah. actually a place for them as opposed yeah. to i mean what were the historical numbers of javan rhinos like oh, in the, the, 1910 the or something um wh which one has shrunk more were there like thousands yes. of both or yes. one was small and the other one was was bigger i'm not too sure historically <laughs> okay I will say that for the in more endangered species from uh, or between you said from the Sumatran rhino or javan rhino i said Smartran rhino is more dangerous because they are decrease the numbers by years by years the decrease we in Japan rhino increase the number you can see uh, that 
more dangerous is smartron rhino is more decrease from lesser from the way, yeah, uh, bukit barisan selatan to way kambas the, the, the number is uh, much little much decrease decrease mm. and uh, if i can yes. if i can just add there marty it's uh, we've been to both those parks that fremonto just mentioned the uh, gunung lesser national park and the uh, waikambas which is more a sanctuary sort of setup for the sumatra owners the problem if you take uh, gunung lesser they it's a 1.3 million hectare national park uh, uh, forest mm -hmm. and the problem that we all face and that we know i mean there's a few other bigger experts than than me on this would know that endometriosis is a big thing for the females and with the males that don't get in time with the females that's in heat uh, every every two years or two and a half years they they skip cycles so the, the males don't get in time to the females and that's why the sumatra rhinos they are isolated and fragmented in that national park um, and the, the monitoring in, in 1.3 million hectares to know exactly where the males are and where the females are to bring them together. I mean, the, the forest canopy, same for Ujung Kulon at some places, is 55, 60 meters high that you don't see sunlight. We spent eight days searching for Sumatra rhinos with all the ranges and camera traps and hotspot areas. And we didn't see any in, no. in the entire Gunung Liasa. And uh, that's worth the team of experts. The only Sumatra rhino we were fortunate to see was at Waikambas, and that is uh, in a sanctuary. So I agree with Fremanta. I think that the Sumatra rhinos are much more in trouble than the Java rhinos, that we at least have some sort of uh, hands-on approach to, to monitor them and to see that there's an increase in numbers. So I feel for Rudy Putra and his team and the people at uh, Gunung Lesa, but the Sumatra rhinos is very, very quickly um, uh, facing um really facing extinction the, the the interesting thing that you mentioned there i mean it doesn't sound like it's actually habitat destruction because they've got a massive park there it's it's um, other physiological problems and do you think that endometriosis is actually due to inbreeding as well or is it now if you if you remember that first uh, one of the first or second maps uh, fermanto showed us the historical distribution, it's the same for the Sumatra rhinos. They, they, that entire region and area, they, they, they were free roaming. I mean, Rios can, can show us on the maps. He's doing it on a, doing it on a daily basis to, 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 to see what the distribution historically was and what it is today. And uh, the Sumatra was thousands in numbers mm -hmm. once upon a time. But now they isolated and fragmented to the point that we, and, and again, we can't take the South African situation where we, on a daily basis, have a management approach and move males and females and different camps and translocate them and have a genetic database and, and almost a, 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 a breeding program for our own rhinos. That, that's completely different from what they, they face that side. They, they've got different issues. They don't see those animals. They don't know where they are. They don't know the health of the animals, the, the age. And I mean, again, the males and the females are separated. They just can't get uh, quick enough to each other to, to be able to breed. Okay, cool. Thanks very much, Fermanta and uh, Francois. Okay. Uh, maybe some my friend, uh, Mr. Royce or Mr. Miss Nia or Mr. Ofat uh, can some uh, uh, about the uh, yeah advice or suggest. Okay. Roy, hello everyone. The comments. Yeah. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, hello, uh, uh, Mr. Van Royce. My name is Royce, not Rios. So uh, maybe I can add something uh, 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 about the first question about the genetic uh, situation in Javan Rhino. Uh, what maybe uh, Kangfirmanto means. Uh, that right now we we didn't see that we have uh, the problem because of the of the genetic yet uh, uh, because we still see the the bird from from the rhino but potentially uh, that's what we are trying to anticipate uh, in the future because we seen that uh, body deformation as as a signs of the genetic problem in the population is already appear in, in the Japan rhino populations. 
and we and we know that uh, today we we have only two like uh, haplotype the the female line of ancestor in in the population that means that uh, this population could be only uh, uh, growth from very limited number of rhino from uh, uh, initially in, in in the past because before the the eruption of the Krakatoa in 80, 8, in 1883 uh, that part of the Japan rhino habitat is uh, occupied by people actually there there people there uh, in in that area area so when when the Krakatoa explode in the at, at the time uh, after that the rhino uh, starting to to occupy the island the the peninsula so they could be uh, the, this population could be only come from a small number of of individual uh, at the first time so the the inbreeding depression uh, could be very high but that's uh, still a hypothesis because we still try to uh, uh, get the evidence of that uh, unfortunately uh, right now we haven't been able to map the the phylogenetry, the kinship of the rhino, uh, because we haven't uh, we haven't uh, genetic specific genetic marker for for the microsatellite. You, uh, we used to do that kind of uh, analysis, but uh, we use like uh, we use uh, I think we use uh, Indian rhino marker at that time, but not very un unsuccessful. Uh, in 2014. Nia, do you want to add something for, from the Sumatra Rhino side? Yeah, Bunia, Wanga Bunia. No, are you there? Uh, Nia is here. He, uh, she cannot unmute. Can you help her? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you to. Uh, introduce me uh, uh, Pak Firmanto and yeah. uh, good afternoon uh, good evenings for all the people around the world thank you uh, to uh, hear here with with us in the world rhino days to talk about the one of the uh, rhino species in Indonesia actually uh, Related with uh, with Sumatran rhinos genetics, it's a little bit different with uh, Javan rhino situation. Uh, Javan rhino, we actually worry about the inbreeding. Uh, if I can add a little bit what uh, Ro is already mentioned before, uh, actually until now we haven't really knows the rate of inbreeding depression. We believe that. Uh, we believe that the inbreeding already happens and we can see some sign from the inbreeding in the population, uh, but we don't know how the inbreeding depressed the population. We still don't get any rate of inbreeding depression. That's what we are trying to know by, uh, def, uh, by conducting the genetic works on this uh, population. Uh, because if we know all the genetic profiling for uh, genetic Profile from all the rhinos individuals in this uh, nation uh, uh, in Javan rhino, we can actually do the calculation and then analyze the how rate the in uh, the the inbreeding can depress the population. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can uh, get the number soon so we can manage the population based on the genetics. Uh, for Sumatran rhino, actually, it's a little bit uh, different uh, because in, ja uh, in Sumatran rhino, uh, we know that the population already scattered for long times ago. And then actually uh, what we worry, it's not about the inbreeding depression anymore because maybe it's the inbreeding already depressed the population because the sign of the inbreeding depression in Sumatran rhino it's more obvious based on our uh, not our I'm, I'm not part of the author but there is a paper that uh, write about uh, from 70 until 80 percent of the Sumatran rhino that 
capture from the wild population having a reproduction pathology, which is it's one of the sign that uh, the population, uh, the, the inbreeding already depressed the population. So what it happened, uh, it's definitely for Sumatran rhino leaf for uh, many years uh, scattered by each other. We also worry about the allele effect from the from the Sumatran rhinos uh, population that makes also the individuals of Sumatran rhino is having a, a reproductive pathology. I think that's what I can add. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oke, okay, thank you, Bunia. Makasih ya. <laughs> And thank you for thank you for staying. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Marty, does that answer your question? I don't think we can do better than that. Other <laughs> <laughs> uh, questions? Am I am I missing any questions at the moment? Uh, um, Dr. Akbula from uh, Nigeria, welcome. It's good to see you again. Um, he's a veterinarian from Nigeria. Um, I see a lot of the researchers and academics are still in tonight and learning from you. So thank you for the trouble that you took. There are maybe not, unfortunately, not as many people in tonight as we would have liked, but um, nonetheless, we are, we, we are here to learn from you, unfortunately. Yeah. We talked to you about load shedding before um, you started um, your presentation and you did not know what load shedding is. So <laughs> we have a problem that you do not have. Um, Sandra Hardy, <laughs> please. Um, I just wondered if there's any chance to um, improve the gene pool um, by using captive Java rhinos that could perhaps be released um because i can see that um the genetic problem could cause abnormalities mm -hmm. is that a possibility um you, again we just need to get uh, muted um i think uh miss nia is this the veteran doctor and she also uh she's the expert about the dna We we thought we see a lot of uh, you know, analyze about the DNA. Maybe she's much expert from me about the DNA and everything. Uh, maybe Miss Nia, can you help about the Sandra Hardy uh, question? Yeah, if I not mistaken, you asking about the rhino captive to increase the gene pool? Yes. Unfortunately, for Javan rhino, we don't have any rhino in captivity. So all the rhinos. No. What about other countries? I mean, would that, could that, no, it couldn't help. You couldn't reintroduce them. Uh, we don't have any Javan rhino outside Indonesia. We don't oh, have really? any Javan rhino in the zoo. Yep. Okay. So all the Javan rhino live in Ujung Kulon oh. only as a, uh, so we manage, we manage Javan rhino in an in situ. In situ. Okay, and then I just had one other question, which is, what is your human population? Now? Yes. I, actually, I don't know really exactly how, how many human population in Indonesia now, if one of the, my colleagues can add, it's a lot, millions. Uh, maybe I, I, I think this is Mrs. Sarahari said, about the population near the buffer zone. Human? Yeah, yeah, human. Oh, it's yeah, like around. five, five, uh, five thousand. Yes, around, five thousand. Five thousand human have, population. Uh, the island. Yeah, no, no. Not in that island, in the in the 19 buffer village surrounding yeah. the park. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your question, Sandra. Are you sure you looked like you wanted to ask a question or am I wrong? <laughs> no, you can read my expression. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> calculating in my head if the population is that. And uh, if you do catch poachers on the camera, are you able to 
catch them easily with yeah. a smaller population. The 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 poaching the poaching person, yeah, yeah, it's easy. Yes, easy, easy to we we go to to, to capture them because uh, you know we use local people, we use our, our camera and then identify it by the local people by local people also. This is one their house. We we know their house and then we came after yeah. that from the <laughs> forest. <laughs> We came to uh, maybe uh, we captured after we have the the data about their their poaching uh, last week, and then we go to yeah. their house the the, the the poaching person, <laughs> and then we said, why are you inside the international <laughs> park? What for? Yeah, yeah. That's because we we use uh, video trap. Maybe tomorrow we go yeah. with, uh, CCTV or something else. Much better from the camera trap, yeah. But we you know about the data is classified and everything. Maybe you know with satellite and every uh, the classified information is. Yeah, uh, we we concerned about that also. Yeah, because um the perimeter of the park is not on a coastal region, no. Huh? Because the the perimeter of the park is not on a coastal area yeah it's inland yeah uh, okay so you, you, I, you see in my uh, presentation we have uh, i said with with three area with really? panetan island it's menanjung and also with the gunung honje at gunung honje it's a lot of uh, village it uh, the misnia said is uh, nine, uh, 19 village in buffer zone but in Semenanjung, okay. it is the habitat of Japan Rhino, have no village, near, no near, nor or, or you close the, the, the village. They are, they are close, the, the, the habitat of Japan Rhino is all, all the sea. The access you can go there by, by sea or by land. If you won't go, go okay. by land, you must pass our gate first. Yeah. Oh. Okay, does that pose a threat? But I see here uh, they said in fact the population is 145 million, is much more than 5,000. I think that's just in the surrounding area. No, but that's my question, Yuan. Thank you, Fermanto. Thank you, Isha. Uh, yeah, that is, that is um, 5,000 as the immediate population, but 145 million on yeah. one. Um, island is significant population pressure and um, mm. well done for also dealing with that pressure um, and still maintaining that population. Uh, just a comment yes. that Peter Wolf made earlier is that um, in the 1960s, the South African of white rhino was also down to 60. So um, it can be done. It's difficult, but it can be done. Can I add something? Uh... Sure. Yeah. So the the number that uh, that we got from the from the message, uh, one hundred and forty five million is in the Java Island. Uh, all all of the Java Island is not not uh, the the population surrounding the national park. Uh, okay. I think if if Kang Fermanto can uh, show the the map, we can. Uh, give more detailed explanation about the area because the Ujung Kulon National Park uh, consists from the island, the, the left part of the of the island, we call them the Panaitan Island, the peninsula where the rhino habitat, uh, the core habitat for the rhino is there, and the, the other part is the uh, Honje mountain, mountains uh, surrounded by, by villages. So the the population uh, only in the left part of the area, the population of human is surrounding that area. Uh -huh. The other part, uh, the other two part is not occupied by, by people uh, right now. It's, that yeah, makes it think clear that now that you describe it. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's much clearer, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Dr. Akbula, um, please unmute and ask your question. Thank you very much. Um, I missed quite a lot of the presentation, but um, I had a question. Now, we've lost the West African rhino. 
right? Is there anything we can learn from what is happening now and what has happened in the past to avoid such a loss happening? Because with the rate of um, poaching of the rhino in South Africa, yes, it's been tough. Yes. Um, the loss is just too much. So can we learn from what you guys are doing so as to prevent such a disaster? as the loss of the West African rhino. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I will answer the question. Maybe Mr. Ofat or something else, uh, my friend from Indonesia can also answer. Uh, I think different, the, the different threats in your, in South Africa with Indonesia is different. Your threat is come from other country, right? from Tanzania or, or uh, Central Africa and everything. After, uh, after I am visiting from to South Africa and then talk to the team I meet in South Africa, your threat uh, from uh, near from the, you know, uh, Kruger National Park also, they have threat from other country, other people. Uh, because the, the country, your, your, the, the country in your uh, maybe to to many poor people, yeah, and then the culture is not uh, different. We are Asian, and then you're uh, African. Uh, we the, the 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 you know the the poor the 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 poor the poor people much more in uh, outside South Africa, and then if if you. Uh, Put the, the you know the cell of the Javan rhino horn or Javan rhino Jav, apa, the the rhino horn, you sell easier in South Africa. In Indonesia, it's not easy. You sell the horn. This is the, the different kind. If you want to 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 I, I, I my suggest, if you want to decrease the the poaching, you capture the buyer of the horn. And your horn cannot go to the uh, from South Africa, yeah. I remember if you the South Africa the, the horn owner cannot sell to, to out the to outside South Africa. Is that right? And then if you if the buyer the, the for the horn is uh, decrease, I think the poaching will decrease because in our in our Indonesian same like you, if you, you talk about the birds. Sometimes the local people we capture, but the, the buyer of the the, uh, the birds is not captured because they are have no proof. Yeah, it's in Indonesia, but the local people has must be awareness and everything, and then uh, you have some some right campaign. Maybe in our area, Indonesia is little, but in South Africa is very big. Yeah, well, it's a very big very big island in the, in Indonesia. Maybe this is uh, some problem also in in South Africa. I think uh, my suggest is we must capture the the buyer of the horn. That's it. Maybe some my friend Mr. Ofat can edit some uh, suggestion or some answer. I, I think I I cannot share what uh, can you do for uh, 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 I mean to 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 decrease the the poaching the rhino poaching but uh, and on this um, occasion i would like to to say uh uh yeah one side people happy with the rhino birth in ojung national park but in the other side the wildlife recently unhappy I would like to tell the truth, what happened in, in Ujikul National Park right now about the situation. Because talking about the, the Japan Reno or Reno conservation is we have to talk and speaking holistic, not only the, the number of population, but also the, the situation, the, the security of the, of the wildlife. I don't know, uh, Mr. Firmanto agree with what I said, or uh, Mr. Royce or uh, other uh, friends who work for the Javan Rhino. 
but the situation uh, on July, our uh, Reno monitoring unit, they found a snare on the peninsula, but we don't know this is snare for the uh, Javan rhino or maybe for the white kettles or big other mammals. Then after that, uh, me and Mr. Royce, we discussed and we established the snare operation, uh, swap operation. And our team uh, came into to the, to the peninsula and then found another snare. So there are two snares. And then last week, um, our team, uh, my team and uh, Roy's team, we also sent the, the team to the north during two weeks on the snare swipe operation. And they are still in the jungle. We wait for the report from yeah, me and uh, Mr. Roy is waiting for, for the report from, from the team. Uh, the, the team uh, that we established involving local people and uh, the head of the team is from Park Rangers. I think uh, that's uh, what I want to share. Thank you. Thank you for that. It sounds like you're um, keeping your keeping an ear on the ground and being aware of what is going on um, in the jungle itself. And it sounds like an enormous challenge um, considering the terrain that you have to navigate. So yeah, once again, thank you. Thank you for making the time to do uh, this presentation. Um, while you do this kind of work, we really appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Akbula, I hope that somewhat answered your question. It's a difficult question to answer. Um, if you have any follow-up question, you're welcome. Otherwise, um, it is very late on their side. I would like to, to, to ask um, our audience, if you don't mind, that we say good night to these gentlemen if there are no further questions at this stage. They are already way past midnight. Thank you, Kurnia, for, for um, really bringing some um, you know, expertise to the screen as well um, this late at night. We really appreciate it. No further questions? Then we look forward to seeing everybody next yeah. week in the same place, seven o'clock South African time. And it would be wonderful if um, from time to time, um, our colleagues from Indonesia pop in and see what we are doing and um, check in on us as well. Make sure we're doing a proper job on this side of the ocean. Um, <clears throat> we look forward to seeing all of you next week again in Unlocking Nature. <laughs>